Very motivational sound check this morning. And I cannot, I cannot say enough how incredibly awesome this is. Uh, my name is Brian Crane. I uh, uh, the GlamisJunes.com uh, board member of Burbo. We kicked this off 17 years ago. 17 years ago. We, uh, for those who don't know, so our group, our uh, Watch 13 group, came out here and there was maybe about uh, 35 or 40 of us out here back in 03. And uh, we talked to Jeannie Boardman. Uh, for those that don't know, this uh, you can you can hit up GlamisVeterans.org and find out a little bit of uh, information about how this box got here, how the flagpole went up. Uh, the morning of Chuck Boardman from over at Boardmanville. And uh, yeah, yeah, so I did a little bit of research and uh, I got permission and, and we came out here to change the flag. And as I said, it was about 40 of us out here standing where you're standing right now. But not you guys in the back, because we didn't have that many people. We were all just kind of like right here, right here. And uh, we changed out the flag, said the Pledge of Allegiance, recognized our veterans in attendance. There were about 11 of them. All right, so, so let me see, just you don't have to move right now, but let me see show of hands if you are a veteran. Put your hand in the air, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women that you see right now, that is exactly why we're here doing what we're doing. I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come to three miles away from the nearest paved road in the middle of some morning so for some organized event that's, uh, that we're here to, to recognize and thank these men and women that have worn the uniform. So thank you. And it was so global that the idea was that we would never see war again. So horrific. So Armistice Day was created to recognize the cease of hostilities on November 11th at the 11th hour and the 11th minute of the 11th month. Well, we're human, and we don't learn from our mistakes all too well. We try, but we didn't do it. And we ended up with another world war. We ended up with a Korean war. We ended up with a Vietnam war. Wars. And we're gonna continue seeing the horror. And we're gonna continue asking our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers to go out there and do what has to be done. So they changed our Mistis Day to Veterans Day. And now every year on November 11th, we have a scheduled day so that the entire United States of America takes at least a moment because it's on every single calendar as a federally recognized holiday that we thank our men and women that have served this country in any capacity as veterans doing what needs to be done. That's Veterans Day. So it is a special day and this is a special event, but I would ask each and every one of you that anytime, whether it's in April or June or December, when you come across somebody that's wearing that Purple Heart, Vietnam served, or any type of distinguishing marks that show them to be a veteran, or you hear that, hey, Uncle so-and-so may have served and, and, and uh, uh, done something. That just, it means a lot to our veterans to have somebody come up, give them a handshake, or a high five, or a COVID-friendly elbow bump, or whatever the case is, and say thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Because what they have done is they have signed a check. Every single man and woman that has put on the uniform, you'll notice on the back of these shirts, it leads to a part of it. I do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States from enemies, both foreign and domestic. And bear truth and allegiance to the same. That is a sworn oath. And when you give that oath, you're giving your blood, 
You're giving your life and you're writing that check that may be cashed at any time. At any time. It says, this is my life. It's yours. I'm giving it to our country, to our nation, for our freedom, for our prosperity, for our liberty. And that's a really big deal. That's a really big deal. Make sure that the United States military is the strongest fighting force on the face of this entire planet. That's why we do what we do. But every single man and woman that's ever served has had somebody to support them, somebody to enable them, somebody to allow them to do what they do and make those sacrifices. And, and by doing so, they have made those sacrifices themselves. Some of them are unimaginable. Many of us take for granted that when we have a child, you get to see that child say his first words or take his first steps, but not the men and women that have signed up for this because that's part of writing that check. You sacrifice everything. Things that many of us take for granted, you sacrifice dinners at home. You sacrifice months and months of being away from your family and your loved ones. So those family and those loved ones have had to be more resilient and more strong. They have had to prop us up as veterans and, and to allow us to do what we do. And that's a lot of work for them, that's a big ask. Some of them didn't sign up for it right away. But hopefully all of them have, have met that and supported you. So can I see if you are a family member or support system of somebody that has worn the uniform, can you please raise your hand? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, you have somebody in your family that has written a letter, has called home, has talked to you, You're the people that make us able to do what we do. Amen. The backbone, the support center, and you wear the uniform without wearing the uniform. It's internal, it's in your blood. Thank you. <laughs> Over the years, we have lost a lot of our brothers and sisters. A lot of them can't join us today, and they can never join us again. is powerful stuff and, and the act of thanking a veteran for their service allowing them to say I served here there I did a thing and they didn't do it for the recognition they didn't do it to come out here and be thanked or handed a challenge fund they did it because they had something deep down and wanted to serve I have known many wars in my 90 years and each and every one, my eyes have filled with tears. So as we remember them every day, get down on your knees and fervently pray that there will never be another war. I am your fight. I am your flag. I was born June 14th, 1777. I was more than just cloth shaped in a design. I am a refuge of the world's oppressed people. I am the silent sentinel of freedom. I am the emblem of the greatest sovereign nation in the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are 
about to retire this flag and put up a new one for us to improve. Navy, Vietnam, 67, 8, 